Welcome in to the Punt and Pass podcast. I'm your host, Drew Butler. Join alongside my co-host, Jake From Be sure to follow us on social media at Punt and Pass on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at Drew Butler. He is at from Jake Punt and Pass.com, the number one destination for all things college football. First things first, Jake, I was just talking about this before we jump into this week 11 preview, which is just crazy. We're in week 11 of the college football season. I got to give a massive shout out to our intern for this season of college, uh, college football and punt and pass. Liam Brandley. Liam um, is in Grady right now at the University of Georgia sports media program, and he is just crushing it on our social media. So follow at punt and pass on Twitter and Instagram. If you see any of these videos that are being made, it's all Liam. So massive shout out to him. He's been crushing it with our prize picks, uh, DB's freebie, and what was the hashtag bet the from that obviously has changed for obvious reasons. Um, and then some of our other clips that he's edited. It's been so fun. So check it out at punt and pass and then punt and We got an awesome giveaway going on. So head on over to punt and and subscribe to our YouTube page. Jake. Um, I talked your ear off before we started recording this episode and you were like, dude, it's all good. I've been sitting in a hotel room in DC by myself. Uh, is your wife there or, or it, what's going on? Give us a life update. How are you? Yeah. So, uh, we had a little half day today. We play on Monday night football. Oh, that's right. Up. That's right. Um, so we had a nice little off or half day today, um, in hats for practice. And anyway, got back and just been chilling. Uh, me and the wife hanging out, nice. went to Target, had Big a nice day. little walk. I mean, dude, we've been been doing it all, just trying to just fill the time, you know, until we get back to work the next day. But been fun, been hanging, get a little rest. Have you guys uh, had the opportunity yet to like do DC proper, uh, National Mall, Smithsonian, any of those museums? Have you done that yet? No, not yet. And that is, that's one thing that we really wanted to do was, was go into DC, see everything yeah. uh, close. We, we've been to one of the big malls in Tyson. Uh, there's a couple like really neat shopping centers, but we're like 45 minutes away okay. kind of from downtown. So we're not as close as everybody thinks we are, uh, but we're in a nice area and definitely a nice place to do. And a lot of really, really good places to eat here. That's awesome. Um, you have to do it. And I can tell that you haven't done it because the, oh, Nas yeah. the National Mall is not a mall. Um, it's actually that long green strip between the Capitol and the Lincoln Memorial, I believe. And all up and down are free museums you can walk into, uh, beautiful scenery. You get awesome views. I actually did it a year and a half ago. It was pre-COVID, before COVID with Jackie, my wife, and Bridget was like a year old. We brought her up there. Um, fascinating, really, really cool. If you're into history, cool. obviously, yeah. but it's beautiful. And yeah, the mall, the monuments, the memorials, the museums, it's great. So I would highly suggest if you guys have time, you and Caroline, right. Need to go do that. Yeah. Spend a couple hours, walk around and learn something, learn yeah. something, Jake. Yeah. Cool beans. Uh, and then we, we've been having some fun too. We went to a Maverick city music concert, uh, last night, a little, nice. uh, Christian worship band, it was fun. Yeah, Sweet. had a good time. Yeah, and why not, right? That's awesome. That's awesome. You know how else you can have a good time? Tell me. By downloading Prize Picks. That's right. This episode of Punt and Pass is presented to you by our awesome partners over at Prize Picks. If you haven't downloaded the Prize Picks app yet, I have no idea what you're waiting on. We're in the middle of the greatest time of year. Thanksgiving is a couple of weeks away. Football is literally on every single night. College basketball just started. The NBA is going on. The NFL, of course is rocking and rolling. It's almost time to start looking at some playoff scenarios. And on prize picks, you can win 10 extra money in one day and the payouts are instant. And get this, if you use the promo code PUNT, Jake, that's P-U-N-T, PUNT, you get a 100% deposit match up to your first $100. True story. I went to the Falcons game this past weekend. I was in an Uber from my house because I didn't want to deal with parking. The Uber driver downloaded prize picks at a red light he punched in the promo code punt and we both hit a winner. That's how it works. Prize picks is for the people. Download the app now. Go to prizepicks.com. Use the promo code punt. I'll give you the hashtag DB's freebie in a little bit. And also, I was messaging with Adam Wexler, the founder and CEO of Prize Picks earlier this week. They're about to add some extra punt props on prize picks. That's right. Maybe 50 yard plus punts, maybe inside the 20 punts. 
we've got to show punters some love. Prize Picks, of course, <laughs> has been doing it since day one. So download the Prize Picks app. Use the promo code PUNT. All right, let's go three and out. First down the latest edition of the college football playoff rankings. It's the second edition of the 2022 season, Jake, and I don't think there were any surprises as to who was going to be on top. That, of course, is the dogs after they smacked Tennessee in Athens last weekend. So Georgia is ranked number one in the college football playoff poll right behind them at number two is Ohio State. Michigan's number three, TCU's number four, Rounding out the top six, Tennessee and Oregon, Georgia has beaten both of those teams this season. So anything surprising, anything catch out to you? I got a couple of things that I'd love to discuss with you. Honestly, unbelievably, I I, I don't have an issue with this ranking, honestly. I I know as, uh, you know, we're in the media a little bit, we're supposed to, you know, have issues with stuff they do. But I really don't have an issue with this one. Georgia is rightfully where it needs to be. Um, Ohio State, you know, as long as they keep winning, they're going to be fine. Ohio State and Michigan have to play each other um, at the end of this year. And so that's going to kind of take care of itself. Um, And I think TCU has done enough to deserve respect of where they're at. The only thing is arguably I could say Tennessee is, you know, if they played head to head, that Tennessee would probably boat race TCU a little bit. But as of right now, I'm okay with it. Um, and I just know the rest of it will basically take care of itself. Yeah, it definitely will take care of itself. Evidenced by Georgia playing Tennessee this past weekend. Georgia right. wins. Now Tennessee's on the outside looking in, probably will need some help. Barstool Sports actually put out a great article kind of calling out the college football playoff committee, talking out of both sides of their mouth, making stuff up as it goes, seemingly. And they took a bunch of tweets from sports writers, put it into an article, and just said, hey, you put the pieces together. This is pretty crazy. So Stuart Mandel, who's obviously a highly regarded college football reporter for The Athletic, he tweets out, LOL, last week, Boo Corrigan, who's the chairman of the college football playoff committee, dinged TCU for digging first half holes. This week, he praised TCU for not giving up second half points. So when the committee and a guy named Boo Corrigan comes out and starts saying, hey, here is why we're putting teams here. This is why we put a team there. And then they start giving you excuses at what it sounds like to validate some of these rankings it ends up being pretty insane blake topmeyer i don't even know who this guy is but he's obviously a college football reporter he says i asked boo corrigan again the chairman of the committee how much the committee looks at the margin of defeat to common foes like tennessee and oregon each losing to georgia corrigan said it's less about score differential and more was it a one-sided game OK, so Top Meyer follows up and says, does the committee consider both losses one sided? Because obviously Georgia beat Oregon 49 to three and then they beat Tennessee, dominated them 27 yeah. to 13. And Corgan said yes. So it's just really interesting how, look, these reporters are ready to go, Jake. They are like rabid dogs wanting to ask these questions to validate the articles they're going to write. And it puts this Boo Corgan guy in a really, really tough position because, quite frankly, I don't know if they can justify some of the rankings that they made. TCU, I think, was seven last week. Is that right? Yeah. And now they're four. They got a big test this weekend. They're undefeated. They're heading to Texas. It'll be really interesting to see how the Horn Frogs play. We'll get into that inside the five. Yeah. But my question to you is like, hey, if Michigan or Ohio State lose to each other in a three-point game and it's a knockdown drag out, can two Big Ten teams make it? I don't know. I think that would be tough. Um, I, it – is this all right? To speaking of, about Ohio State, Michigan, is this more about how good Ohio State and Michigan basically are, both of them being nine and zero, or is it kind of how bad the rest of the Big Ten is? That's a great question, and I will just tell you the Big Ten sucks this year. I mean, it is not <laughs> deep whatsoever. Ohio State and Michigan are so far ahead, and I'm not saying that that maybe hasn't happened in the past in the SEC, but the SEC is much deeper from a competitive standpoint than the Big Ten. And if you're going to try to argue with me about that, I won't even waste my breath because, simply put, Ohio State is playing Indiana this weekend. Indiana is three and six. They are one and five. In the Big Ten, Michigan just played Rutgers and I think had a tough game against Rutgers. Rutgers is awful. Like these are teams that are well below 500. 
They're not competitive within the Big Ten. And Ohio State and Michigan are on this collision course to play each other, and they will be undefeated at the moment. But um, I would agree with you. Like, the Big Ten is not deep at all. It's just not very good either. Yeah, I, I agree. And then on the, other, on the flip side is of uh, this is you have the Big 12 here. Yep. You know, got TCU – um, who else they got up here pretty close? To Texas is the highest ranked three loss team. Kansas has kind of picked up right. and gotten some life. Gosh, and then Baylor, Oklahoma <laughs> State's falling off the map. <laughs> Oklahoma but... State's falling off later of lately, but but they got some good some good football teams and they're playing good competitive ball. Um, somewhat close rivaling the SEC here in this, but um, I don't know. I, I saw a cool uh, stat today about Michigan and Ohio State. Uh, since Harbaugh's been there, six of the seven meetings, both teams have been ranked in the top 12 and then three out of seven, I don't know, in the top five or something. But I don't know. I mean, it's just, hey, we'll just kind of kick the can down the road and beat everybody until we meet each other at the end. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not I'm not too sold on it. My thing is this, and we mentioned it last week on the podcast before Georgia took on Tennessee. When you look at the Georgia point spread last week, Tennessee was ranked number one by the college football playoff committee for the reasons that they said after the show, Georgia was ranked number three, kind of a head scratcher. Why would you put Ohio state in front of Georgia? Doesn't really matter now, but then you went out to Vegas and Vegas said, uh, based on our power rankings, which again are analytical and data driven, Georgia is an eight point different team than Tennessee. Um, And then it ended up being a nine and a half point team before kickoff. And that proved to be, Correct. I think there's too much subjectiveness in the room. Again, this is 13 people. Um, Some of them have never been in the game of football. They're at the game. I I just don't get it. Like, who who put these guys? You know, we voted. I mean, we just had the election. Election night was last night. I mean, let's let's elect these guys in. You know, let's. (laughs) I agree with that. I mean, I, mean I, I totally agree with that. I'm not saying that it is a prerequisite that they like had to have played football before. Right. But when you're looking at the history of some of the people who have been deciding who plays for the national championship, Jake, it's a little suspect. Like there's no doubt about that. Yeah. I, I look, I agree. I mean, I, I would love to know the tape hours these guys have actually put into watching these football teams. Obviously, yes, the first four, because those matter a ton. But then everything else after that, I mean, it looks pretty dang close to the AP top 25 kind of right here side by side. So how much are they really putting that much effort into it? I don't know. You're exactly right. I've been saying this for the past couple of years. You know how you hold the committee accountable? You know how you don't have to put it all on Boo Corrigan's forehead where this guy has to answer questions to the media after the rankings come out? And quite frankly, he probably don't want to do that and it's unfair to him. Do you know how you overcome that? You televise the meeting of the committee. I don't care if it's eight hours long. I don't care how boring it is. I don't care if they take a two-hour lunch break. Shit, put it on C-SPAN. Like, we don't care. (laughs) We just need it televised so that they're held accountable. I want to hear the discussion of why they put a team at four the week before the team was at seven. I want to hear the discussion, how they put Tennessee at one, how Ohio state ended up at two, how Georgia was at three. I just want to hear it. Okay. I bet you the ratings would be relatively good. Um, And I bet you fans would watch it. I would watch it. There is no doubt about it. Call me crazy, but televise that shit. I think it'd be awesome. Dude, I think the ratings would be, I mean, it'd be surprising, great. surprisingly yeah. good. Um, and then I think just the banter of it, because somebody's going to say something incredibly stupid. Yes. And that yes. meeting and everybody's going to be like, how in the world is, is this, this guy, is this guy in this room making this decision with the fate of a program in his hands to go to the college football playoff after something he just said? I mean, yes. that would just be insane. It'd, it'd and, be great. And, and, and honestly, I think people need to know. That is 100% correct. Hold us accountable. Hold everybody accountable. Last thing before we go to second down, you know, the Pac-12, Oregon is on an absolute steamroll right now. They're ranked number six. USC right behind them at eight. UCLA is at 12. Utah is at 13. So watch out. A lot's going to happen over the next couple of weeks. And as we said it on Monday's podcast, people, wake up. The playoffs literally start right now. You got to start winning your football games to position for the final four. All right, let's go to second down. Great discussion, by the way. 
The SEC West currently is in limbo, and it's funny because for the first time in years, Alabama is essentially on the outside looking in. They are. Fact. On the outside looking at, I don't know if you saw the SEC short today. Uh, SEC shorts is the funny social media clips. Are you familiar with these guys? No. Um, they do hilarious sketch comedy, couple a week, usually around what's happened on the weekend. And then, of course, they dropped one today and they had an Alabama fan. Um, essentially it was like an Alabama fan walks into the college football playoff committee meetings. And it was like a make a wish kid. It was like, Hey, Alabama, you're going to be able to go to the college football playoff this year. It's so funny. Oh so gosh. well done. Um, I'll tweet it out at drew Butler, but essentially what they're saying, like it's the Alabama fans don't know how to deal with this. Yeah. So they were doing like a fake, they were doing a fake trophy ceremony. <laughs> it's really, really funny. <laughs> oh, um, it was good stuff. They do really good stuff, SEC shorts. But the SEC West right now, Jake, because Georgia just has to win one of the next two games, I believe, beat Mississippi State this weekend or beat Kentucky next weekend to clinch the SEC East. The SEC West, man, up for grabs. LSU out front right now. They're 5-1 and one in the conference. Ole Miss is right behind them at 4-1. and one, But remember, Ole Miss got smacked by LSU, so they lose that tiebreaker. Yeah. And then Alabama – at four and two, they've got two losses in the conference, but they play Ole Miss this weekend. Yeah. Any initial thoughts here? LSU plays Arkansas this weekend. We'll get into that. But on Monday, we said, watch out for Coach Pittman. This could be interesting. You and I probably both expect Alabama to beat Ole Miss this weekend. But if Ole Miss upsets Alabama, LSU could drop to Texas A&M or drop to Arkansas, and things get spicy quick. All right. I mean, LSU has Arkansas – on the road, and then they play Texas A&M last game of the season on the road. I mean, is it bizarre, it's just out of the picture, to say that the, is there a chance that they lose both of those games? LSU? Yeah. Oh, I think there's can... definitely a chance. I think, think there's definitely a chance they can lose both of those games. I mean, LSU, albeit a great story, has been overperforming week in and week out. Do not I forget so. who they were earlier in the season. And now when you hit the road, Jake, things change. And guess what? They know one thing. If they misstep, they're not going to the SEC championship. So things can get a little tighter. Mistakes can happen. Things can slip away quicker than you think. Look, uh, they're rolling. So they just have to win – if Alabama beats Ole Miss, they just have to win one game. Like we think, they just have to win one of those two. Uh, which is which is doable. Uh, and all bet all sure. bets would be off at Texas A and M, right? Saturday after Thanksgiving, that game historically has been insane with yeah, crazy yeah, finishes yeah. and and yep. a lot of unknown uh, happenings throughout those matchups. I'm just telling you, watch out for this Arkansas game this weekend. At noon, so. it's at the end. It's at yeah. noon. Yeah, the, the resurrection of the fighting pigs, man. I don't know. I man, I'm liking my, I'm liking my hogs, man. Do you like the hogs? Okay, so like in, hogs. in that situation, then Ole Miss would have to beat Alabama. So, do you think Ole Miss can beat Alabama coming off a of bye week? It's in Oxford. Alabama's lost two games at this point. I think it's a gut check game for Bama, so we'll get to that in a little bit. But, like, that's what would have to happen. I think if LSU yeah. does lose this weekend, Ole Miss probably takes the L as well, so it puts even more pressure on that Texas A&M uh, matchup. Yeah. I I, I mean, I, I think there's a – the if we're doing percentages here, there's uh, the biggest percentage to me is I see LSU dropping one of those games, Arkansas or Texas A&M, rather than winning both of those games on the road. And so Ole Miss basically, out of this calculation we're doing here, controls their own destiny in winning. If they beat Alabama, hey, dude, they're about to play in the SEC championship. I know. The Hawks. I know. It's going to be interesting. Uh, a Very lot to watch in the SEC West. We'll keep our tabs on that. But it is not done yet. And as no, Jake no, Fromm no. is saying right now, if LSU takes the L this weekend, the focus goes immediately to the 330 game, which, of course, is Alabama at Ole Miss. Yeah. So – Lot to happen in the SEC West. We'll keep tabs on it right here, but it looks like the dogs are about to wrap up another SEC East. Think about this, Jake. Since Georgia has lost to Florida in 2020, they have not dropped a regular season game. It's crazy. It's crazy. It really it is, is crazy. All right, let's I'll go say, to third down. Go ahead, say please. It, I'll say it again. 
don't take it for granted. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hey, man, there is no question about that. All right, let's go to third down. It's a pretty broad question, but it's one that I've been seeing is picking up some picking up some chatter. Should Stetson Bennett be invited to New York for the Heisman ceremony? We just said it. Georgia, since their loss to Florida in the 2020 regular season, has not lost a regular season game. Stetson playing at a high level in the biggest games in that stretch. Yeah, we'll go back to last year. Orange Bowl, awesome performance. They win the national championship. Now he's got this team right back to where they left off, the number one team in the nation, the dismantling of Tennessee this past weekend. Leland Barrow, Claude, Felton, wake up. Get the Stetson Heisman campaign going. Let's see if we can get this guy an invite to New York City. What do you think, Jake? Dude, I think he totally should be invited. Um, I mean, one, he's a, a super valuable player for his football team. And then, two, he's putting up pretty dang good numbers as well. Right there with the so-called best of them in college football. He He's putting up dang good numbers. So, better numbers. Yeah. Better it, numbers. Better numbers. I mean, so why, why is he not in the mix? Why is he not in the conversation? We definitely got to get this this whole media pot swirling and, and and get this thing going and get Stet up to New York, man. It is it is so true. I'm trying to pull it up now. Um, Stetson Bennett, 14th in passing yards. Um, that is ahead of C.J. Stroud. That is ahead of Bo Nix. That is ahead of Hendon Hooker in passing yards. Um, let's look at completion percentage. Bo Nix is number two in the nation. Hendon Hooker is number seven in the nation. Stetson is 22nd in the nation. Let's look at touchdown passes. CJ Stroud, 29 touchdown passes to four picks. He's second in the nation. Caleb Williams, 28 touchdown passes to one interception. Mm. He is tied for third in the nation. Bo Nix is 15th. Hendon Hooker is 17th, 21 and 2. Stetson, where are you? You're messing up my argument right now as I continue <laughs> to scroll down. I think that's where he might fall a little bit short. Those raw nothing, touchdown numbers. Nothing gets you hired faster as a coach than touchdown passes. That is, go. I'm telling you, that is that is the deal. If if you're if you're a coach or if you if you just 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 notice it next time of hey which offense is balling which quarterback's balling look at the touchdown passes and then see where that coach goes and gets a job you're like hmm yeah yeah Stetson has yeah. eleven touchdown passes C J Stroud has twenty nine so that might hinder his opportunity That's... from a flashy statistic standpoint to get an invite to New York but what is what is the Heisman Trophy? It's considered the most outstanding player in college football, but oftentimes it's the best player on the best team. He's only got, is certainly he, one of the best he, on the best team. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. But he's only got 11 passing touchdowns? So that's what it says right here on ESPN, college football player passing statistics, yeah. Because in the first couple of weeks, he was – didn't he had three the first game, and then he had three another game right there in the beginning. I mean, that's six. You're telling me he's only had – Five and the other seven games. Let's uh pull up his actual game log right here. Hey, look, this is what we do right here on punt and pass. We we double check, we triple check, <laughs> triple check. Okay, let's see. UGA. Yeah, eleven touchdowns, three interceptions, sixty-seven point eight percent completion percentage. Um, I'm trying to see his rushing statistics as well because he's definitely had a couple of rushing touchdowns throughout the season. See, he threw for two tuds against South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Okay, first game of the year, Oregon. He said six rushing touchdowns. That helps. Definitely helps. But I mean, again, but what has he done but, from like a leadership standpoint yeah. and getting his number one ranked team back to where they are and playing really great in the biggest moments? I think it comes down to two people. Okay, I'm right, calling so them out: Leland Barrow and Claude Felton. Get to work, gentlemen. Let's go. Yeah, three people. Let me add one. Let me add one more. Who? If we get we gotta get on. We gotta call Munkin to be like, hey. A little bit more, you know, uh, passing calls down there in the red zone. And uh, let's get our boys some more passing tuds. 
absolutely. There is just no question about that. So if they do turn the Jets on in the passing game, these next three games, maybe say three touchdown passes per game, get him to 20 touchdown passes on the season. I bet you Stroud finishes with around 40. Could that be enough for an invitation? I think the conversation needs to start though. So it's that uh, we're cheering for you. It'd be so awesome to see a Georgia player Absolutely. during the Heisman ceremony. That's three and out three great news notes, storylines that Jake and I obviously keep you up to date on. And our opinion is the only opinion that matters. <laughs> That's why we're the tastemakers for college football. There's no question about it. Let's get to hashtag DB's freebie. Yeah. It hit Let's last it. week. Thank you very much. I told you to flex it. I Let's gave go. you four picks. Three of them hit shout out to me. Bigger shout out to Prize Picks. Download the Prize Picks app. Use the promo code PUNT, P U N T, PUNT. You get a 100% deposit match up to your first $100. We're going to the Big 12. The Big 12 this year has been a lot of fun. And guess what? The TCU Texas matchup this weekend is going to be a shootout. A great matchup of coaches, a great matchup of quarterbacks. Sonny Dykes in his first year at TCU has the Horn Frogs undefeated. They have a pathway to the college football playoff. Steve Sarkeesian dealt with a lot of injuries, but Quinn Ewers is back at home. Texas can light up the scoreboard. So I'm looking at Quinn Ewers and Max Duggan both to go over 260 and a half passing yards. That's how we're starting hey, out. Let's go. This DB's freebie. Quinn Ewers, Duggan, Quinn Ewers and Max Duggan both to go two. Over 260 and a half passing yards. What's just up? For, just for clarification here, they're both that number, both of their numbers. Yes, are they are. Right okay. now, as we're taping this on a Wednesday night, that's where they're at. I'm sure they will move. But if you're listening to this, pull up your prize picks app. Make sure you use that promo code punt and take the over. Okay. Love take overs. the over on both of them. In the same vein, B. John Robinson at Texas, the running back, under 125 and a half rushing yards. That's a lot of rushing yards in college football, man. Um, I know the Big 12 has been a little bit crazy. It's been offense happy as it was when we were growing up and watching those crazy matchups with all those high-powered O's and lesser-powered D's. But B.J. Rob, B. John Robinson, excuse me, under 125 and a half rushing yards. Gosh, that is such... A large amount of rushing yards. It is, right? I mean, again, get in there now. It'll go down before kickoff on Saturday, but that is exactly what you need to get in. And then my last one, Devon A. Chain from Texas A&M. This is rushing and receiving yards over 130 and a half. A. Chain is a beast for Texas A&M. They should put some points up on the board against Auburn. Uh, that game is at Auburn, I believe, at night. Going to be a great atmosphere. Two teams that are searching for some identity. But I like A-Chain over the combined 130 rushing and receiving yards. All right? Rushing and receiving yards. Devon A-Chain over 130 and a half. Get in now. Flex it. We're going to win. Three out of those four will hit. Four out of four gets us a bigger payout. That is the hashtag DB's freebie. Max Duggan, over 260 and a half passing yards. Quinn Ewers, over 260 and a half passing yards. B. John Robinson, Texas running back, under 125 and a half rushing yards. And Devon A. Chain, over 130 and a half rush, re, rushing and receiving yards combined. That's it. Download the Prize Picks app. Use the promo code PUNT. You get a 100% deposit match up to your first $100. How do you like that? You think that's a good Dude, one? I like it, man. That's okay. solid. Thanks, fun, man. Uh, little, little fun fact here. Uh, if I wasn't here in D.C. right now, uh, I believe me and my wife said we were going to go to that Auburn Texas A&M game at night. But sadly, we missed it. Yeah. did If I would have told you um, week one, did you go to the Chick-fil-A game? No, you were not there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. If I would have told you on week one that in week 11 – Texas A&M would be heading to Auburn for a night game at 7:30. You'd probably be like, "Oh wow, this is this is going to be really awesome." Probably has some SEC West <laughs> implications. And then I told you in the same breath, 
A&M's three and six, one and five in the SEC, and Auburn is three and six, one and five in the SEC. You probably would have said, Drew, what time did you start drinking <laughs> this morning? Man, I, <laughs> I'd be right there with you on that. I mean, I would not have believed it for a second. Um, both those teams should be middle of the pack, if not nipping on the heels I know. of the likes of Bama uh, there in the SEC West, but they're not it's not great for either program at the moment and right now it's just kind of the race for the bottom and what an unfortunate season to drop the ball alabama two losses lsu coming out of nowhere Ole miss yeah. has looked beatable but they're in a good position so the sec yeah. west was wide open and a and m oh my goodness and auburn sheesh already fired their coach don't need to get off on that tangent. Let's go inside the five. Let's talk about the five biggest games of the weekend. I'll get you out of here. You can hit your bedtime and get <laughs> ready for Monday night football. First game we're going to break down. We've talked a lot about it. Number seven, I believe. Is there, are they number seven in the college football playoff rankings now? I think they are. That, of course, would be LSU. Is hitting the road to take on Arkansas in Fayetteville. 11 a.m. local kick, 12 noon on the East Coast. It's on ESPN. And LSU's a short three-point favorite on the road. Which Arkansas team is going to show up? Jake, you just said, do you think LSU uh, might be counting their chickens before they hatch? Is that the old saying? Dude, I I think so. I think they'll have a little, little win hangover from beating the Alabama Crimson Tide in yes. overtime. Uh, going to play the Hogs, who are just a, a tough, nasty, physical football team. Um, and then the game's also at 11 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. I'm telling mm -hmm. you, that, that on the road, it's got a lot to do with it. Uh, I just tell you, man, I like my my hog fighting Pittmans in right. this matchup. All right. See, I am leaning with you in that regard. Yeah, LSU is now out front in the SEC West. But it was after they upset Alabama at night in Baton Rouge. Crowd rushed the field. Lots of hoopla. I think they're still a little hungover from that celebration. I know Jaden Daniels is playing at a very high level. Yeah, the Tigers are finding their stride during year one under Brian Kelly, but I think Arkansas has so much to prove. They just lost last week to Liberty at home as a 14-and-a-half point favorite. They were down 21 to nothing in that football game. They fought back. They had a couple of plays late in the game to get out with a victory. And to that point, Jake, you really couldn't find two teams battling different emotions coming into a matchup. Arkansas in the depths, LSU at the top of the mountain peak, and one of my mentors in the NFL always told me, there's a fine line between – caring too much and not giving a shit and if you kind of middle that line that's right where the sweet spot is don't let the highs get too high don't let the lows get too low arkansas has been wildly inconsistent this line's a little suspicious i'm taking the home dog give me the three points dude i like it and i think the big matchup here i think barry odom arkansas's defensive coordinator they see kj all the time in practice yep i'm sure they'll have a pretty good scheme uh for Jaden daniels uh, and find a way. I, I think he'll have the defense ready to roll. My man. Great breakdown. Great breakdown. Let's go to the other SEC West game. You would have thought this one would be a lot bigger, but in the same sense, it is just it's as huge, big. Yeah. yeah, it's number nine Alabama heading to Oxford to take on the 11th ranked Ole Miss Rebels. This is your SEC on CBS game at 330. Alabama currently a 12-point favorite. A lot of interesting storylines here. Ole Miss coming off the bye, Jake. Yes, it's in Oxford. Alabama just dropped their second game of the season. This is like gut check time for the Tide. It is. What happens here? Man, you you tell me on this one. I I, I have no idea because on, on, on one hand, you know, I have the, the, the two angels there on both sides. On one hand, I'm like, dude, there's no way Bama loses. I know, right? Two in a row. Not two in a season, but two yeah. in a row. Yeah, and then the third is, loss of the season. You're exactly right. right. And then on the other hand, on the other shoulder, I, there's Kiffin. And it, it's 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 put up or shut up time for Kiffin. It really is. And his antics and you know, beating the old man and all this. I just, I don't I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm just I'm, I'm big underdogs this weekend. Give me Ole Miss, baby. Yeah. I, you know what? 
I disagree with you, and, and, here's, <laughs> and, and, and here's why. Okay, yes, Ole Miss is coming off the bye. Alabama's coming off their second loss of the season at LSU. Greg McElroy, did you see this? Greg McElroy, now an ESPN pundit. He's got a daily radio show in Birmingham with Cole Kublik. I really like Greg. I think he's really, really good on TV as well. For the first time ever, he came out and said, I'm a little worried about the, the future direction of the program. And Nick Saban addressed it and said to Greg, uh, we've lost two games this season by a total of four points, and both of those losses were on the last play of the game. Um, so he kind of shut that one down really quickly. But there's a little chatter. There's a little dissension within the Crimson Tide community, and it all comes down to, in this matchup, can Lane Kiffin finally take down Nick Saban? Lane Kiffin needs revenge from his antics a year ago, the pregame popcorn debacle, and then all yeah. of a sudden you blinked and it was 42-7 to Alabama. This is a gut check for Alabama. Who are the Crimson Tide? Penalties and turnovers have plagued this team all season long. It's been so uncharacteristic of what we've come to expect from Alabama. And I think this is the thing that's being overlooked. You think about Kiffin, you think about Ole Miss, you might think they're going to be throwing the ball all over the place. Well, if you watch their games, they rely oh. heavily on the run game. I think oh, yeah. Bama's defense is able to limit their effectiveness on the ground. So not only am I taking Alabama, I'm going to lay the 11 and a half points Ooh. and tell you Alabama's going to win big. So you hey. and I are on opposite sides there. Go ahead. Nothing. I, I... Honestly, I, I'm just so at loss for words on this. And, and, and I – I really like what Saban said, though. Uh, really putting it in perspective back to Greg on this. It's, hey, we've lost by four points in both those games combined and in the last play of the game. So On each on, game. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's like. Oh, well, I yeah, I, all right, I get it. I get it. Okay. Uh, and on the other hand, it's like, ah, well, you know, just, 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 hey, Ole Miss, just stay in it. Just stay in it long enough. Let the, It's unbelievable. Let them fall on the sword. Let them and their undisciplinedness and the penalties and all that stuff show up. Uh, so hashtag we'll see. Yeah, I you know I totally agree with you. It's like the expectation for Alabama is so sky high, um, and they're a victim of their own success. But you are what your record says you are, and Alabama has two losses, so we will see what happens. I will lay the 12 points with Alabama. Let's go out west. A little Pac-12 top 25 matchup, number 25 Washington heading up. Or down? Yes, down to Oregon. A little geography challenge there for me. Mm. Oregon's ranked number six. Bo Nix playing at an extremely high level. And you would think Oregon has a pretty good pathway to the college football playoff. Currently in this matchup, Oregon is a, I just lost it, 13 and a half point favorite at home. I did not know this. These two teams hate each other. It's a big rivalry. Washington and Oregon hate each other. I would have to guess these are the two teams that leave the Pac-12 and go to the Big Ten to take the pressure off USC and UCLA. It's a conversation for another day. What we're talking about right now, though, Oregon, big favorite against Washington. Are you buying the Bo Nix hype still? This is your boy right here. Dude, I'm, I'm buying it, man. Old boy's balling. Uh, and like we said earlier, the, the college football playoffs – started last week and the week before that so hey i, I think win and you're in uh and arguably you have a, a, a heisman trophy finalist on your team so just just keep playing keep playing at a high level yeah no question bonix 22 touchdowns only five interceptions oregon averaging 520 yards per game they're playing very very well and they've been smoking teams too i like oregon as also uh they've been really good at home as well. Yeah. So I think they can overpower Dan Lanning. Like he's already getting mentioned for the Auburn job. And he's like, guys, I just got here. <laughs> and he said it. He's like, I've moved my kids out here. We love it. Like I'm not going anywhere. So I'll lay the 13 and a half with Oregon. Let's go to the college game day game. Number four, TCU mm. travels to number 18, Texas. This is the battle of supremacy in the state of Texas. Texas is the highest ranked three loss team. In the college football playoff rankings, this game is at 7 p.m. on ES. Oh, excuse me, 7:30 p.m. on ABC. And Jake, Texas is a seven-point favorite at home. TCU's undefeated, ranked number four. What do you think here? I, it's just like, what do they know? 
that we don't. I know. I know. It's a great question. It's like, what? No, something's going on here. You know, is it the the weather? Are they controlling the weather out there yeah. or something? I don't, something? I don't know. Something. Um, yeah, man, I, I just, I, 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 I mean, to me, TCU has earned respect for me. So I'm going to take TCU. Even I'm though, e- even though I really love what Sark's doing, I love having Quinn Ewers back because I, I think he's a baller, uh, really, really a quarterback. But I think TCU is a better football team at the moment, um, and I think they're really going to feel the pressure to, hey, we're in, we're right here. All we have to do is win, and we're in, and we're in the college football playoff. Yeah. Yeah, you're you're exactly right. I'm on ESPN's analytics matchup predictor. Texas has a 73% chance to win this football game. It's like crazy. Oh what is going on here? Goodness. Uh, Quinn Ewers, I just want to ask you a quarterback question. We talked about it earlier on in the season. Lots of hype, top-ranked yeah. quarterback, signs the NIL deal, goes to Ohio State, transfers immediately back to Texas. When you watch him throw the ball, it's so effortless. Mm-hmm. It almost spins slower. It's very catchable. But he can make all the throws. Is that just God given talent? Because he seems like he's got it all. Yeah, some guys just just have it. Some guys just yeah, like Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen. Some guys they just they have that kind of laggy arm. It just it's a noodle. It has no bones in it. Yeah, and it doesn't matter what where they're at, what arm slot they're in. Man, they can just flick it and it spins. Uh, it looks good. Coaches drool over it. They love it. Um, and they and they all kind of have like a little sense of, of arrogance in a sense to basically say, Hey, I'm going to take this, this project, this guy, a bag full of tools and I'm going to molding into a quarterback and they love it. And they love being the guy kind of behind that. So um, definitely guys at the next level are going to love it. I'll brag on you for a second. The best game that I saw you play. Do you know what I'm going to say? Have I told you this before? Mm-mm. 2019 SEC championship game. Dude, you were freaking spinning it against Alabama. Yeah. Um, unbelievable throws. I mean, you were in your bag. I remember I was like, holy shit, you were dropping dimes in that it. game. You guys, yeah. I mean, that when you're when you feel like that, you're like, today's the day. I'm gonna do anything I want. <laughs> yeah. It's good no, stuff. that was no, that was fun. No, I, I remember coming off the sideline. I hit Isaac on a kind of a tight end wrap, short post, kind of up the middle for, I don't know, a second or third score or whatever. But I remember after that, I'm like, I put it exactly where I wanted to. I'm feeling it. I'm on yeah. one right now. Yeah. It's like, just don't want it to end. Sick. There was one play, too. It was on the sideline. It was like a quick out route on the sideline. I forget who caught it, but climb the ladder. You dropped it over like a safety and a DB. I forget. I remember. It I might, it, honestly, it might have been a free play, and I think I threw it to JJ. JJ Holloman. Yeah. Love yeah, that was play. it. That was yeah. it. Yeah, good stuff. Good memory. Love, awesome. love, the, free, love the free plays, man. No doubt. Uh, I like TCU here. I'm going to take the seven points as well. Something's really fishy about this, Something's but touchdown's this. just too much. A touchdown simply is too much. Love the QB matchup. I think that'll be a lot of fun to watch. I think TCU's defense maybe can just like get a turnover, late play, but just they're going to win, so take the seven points. I like TCU over Texas. And we'll wrap things up with the Georgia Bulldogs. Mm. UGA heading to Stark Vegas to take on Mississippi State. Georgia's a 16-point favorite. You know, Stark Vegas, different animal. Cowbell City, there's no doubt about that. A lot of people before the season, Jake, were circling this one going like, this could be a trap game for Georgia. Obviously, you and I talked about it. The Florida, Tennessee, Mississippi State, Kentucky stretch turned into what is Georgia going to do with their 2022 season? Um, they took care of the two biggest hurdles already. Now it's time to hit the road and wrap this thing up. Anything to worry about here in this matchup? I really, I'm not concerned because of the the poise that I saw them play with against Tennessee last week. Obviously, yes, it was at home. But, man, you could just tell these young guys have grown up so much since the beginning of the season, yeah. even. Um, and so, yes, I know they're going into foreign territory. Um, it's going to be loud. Cowbell, cowbells this, cowbells that. And even Alabama's had fits going to Starkville sometimes yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the past. So, 
even with all that said, I'm not worried about it just because of the dominance they played with last week. Um, and nobody does a better job with messaging than Kirby does, and he'll yeah. have a great message for the players and the guys uh, going into the week. So he'll have their mind right. Yeah, you've been all over that. Uh, Kirby's messaging, you've given great examples of what he did while, while you were there at Georgia. Uh, somebody said how important it is to remain patient against Mike Leach led offenses. Now, Will Rogers, the Mississippi state quarterback. Yeah. He, he's had a great year, 26 touchdowns, only five interceptions, but what Georgia's defense has, if Jalen Carter plays, I mean, Will Rogers, you better watch your ass yeah. because he will be yeah. on you uh, very, very quickly. And then Georgia's DBs. I think you just talked about it. The maturity that you've seen them progress into oh, yeah. um, throughout the season. They'll have a great defensive game plan and you let it come to you you let that offense come to you keep everything in front of you obviously they're going to rush for hope they can get home uh, but georgia should take care of business in a big way because simply put when you make a statement like they did a week ago why would you want to drop the ball here against the lesser opponent certainly which is mississippi state so i'll lay that big number uh georgia is feeling themselves right now and i think for good reason so alabama shut this team down it was 30 to nothing and then they scored with one second left, I want to say, to make it 32-6. Um, and even Kentucky smoked Mississippi State 27-17. to So got some faith in the dogs this weekend. I'll lay the 16 and a half. Georgia Absolutely. going to 10-0, wrapping up the SEC mm. East. It's been a fun season so far. Punt and pass has been even better with my man Jake from. <laughs> oh, it's been awesome. It's been a fun ride, baby. It has been a fun ride. We appreciate all of you joining alongside the ride. Please check us out on YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube page. Head on over to social media at Punt and Pass on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at Drew Butler. He's at From Jake. Prize Picks is the presenting sponsor. Prize Picks is the best daily fantasy game in the nation. Download the app. Go to prizepicks.com if you want to do that. Use the promo code PUNT. You get a 100% deposit match up to your first $100 tail the hashtag dbs freebie this weekend that'll be up on our social media pages shout out to prize picks jake anything on the way out brother man got nothing tune in monday night football let's go yeah let's go commanders verse eagles you know what i'll have to find another host for our uh, monday night episode but that's all good jake you got football game to go to man i'll make that happen is that okay can do i have your permission We'll see. Okay. I'll text you. I'll let hey, you know. Maybe, maybe we can do a quick like live stream as we were on the field <laughs> about that pregame. No, I hey, don't do that to you. Hey, we, we don't we don't play until That's until right. eight fifteen tonight. So I can knock it out maybe in the morning. Oh look hey, how committed you, this guy is. Dude, I love it. Hey man, you you gotta get ahead for the, the next week because it's a short week anyway. Um when you That's play right. those Monday night, Monday night games, man, like turn around quick. The, oh, the coaches will already start uh being watching uh game film for the next opponent because i mean you're just hanging around in the hotel all day you can't waste a day yeah not, not in this business that's awesome well go commanders give the eagles their first loss of the season that would be sweet and appreciate all y'all checking in have an awesome weekend again puntpass.com check us out on social media and we will talk to you on monday see you yep